So, my name is Charles Nata Elwood. Um, my middle name is Thai, and I'm half Thai. And I'm going to weave that into my story today. Um, let, just, let me ask this, does anybody out there speak Thai or Laotian? All right, we have, we have a few, so that'll be, uh, this may come up later. Um, but I use, as you heard, power, that, well, I'm going to explain today the power of artificial intelligence, because um, I've been living in that world for a while, and the power of your voice, your own personal voices. Um, and when you combine both of those, these two very powerful things, you can do some incredible, incredible good for humanity, right? Um, and we're going to do some thought experiments today. Um, we're going to go into some other mindsets. And the first one is kind of interesting because it's going to be my mindset. Um, and we're going to travel, we're going to go to, oh, well, I'm half Thai, right? I speak Thai um, and English. I'm bilingual, bicultural. And I oftentimes jump from identity to identity. People say I have a different mannerism and style when I speak one language or the other. So we're going to travel to Thailand, um, once again in my mindset. And uh, this was my, a picture of my sister's wedding in, way up in northern Thailand this past December. Um, and you know, since I speak both languages, my mom thought, oh, we'll put Charlie on stage as the MC. Um, so, so this is going to be hard to envision, but you know, we've met those waiters and waitresses, right, that, that can memorize the whole um, order and take it back. Well, imagine that, except some people would come up and speak English, and I would translate to Thai. Some people would speak Thai, I would translate to English. Um, and there wasn't a menu. Like these stories, you know, I'm trying to slot them in my head. Um, I found, I discovered the hard way, the, some words, some phrases aren't available in the other languages, so you're trying to substitute in your head. Um, some things said in our culture shouldn't be said in Thai culture, <laughs> right? And throw on top of that, um, I had arrived the night before, so I was severely jet-lagged. It's a 13-hour time difference. So imagine all that going on, right? Um, so kudos to those waitresses and waiters that can do that. Um, amazing stuff. Um, but, you know, I've, I've, I wanted to point this out about AI. You know, I've been playing with it for quite a while now. And, you know, I spent my whole lifetime, 40 years, trying to perfect this art of jumping from culture to culture, language to language. You know, I, I pride myself because I speak Thai fluently, right? But artificial intelligence can switch between Thai and English, snap of a finger. Not only that, it can translate amongst all languages. And you can add more languages later, right? That's how powerful this is. Right? It, it's access to this knowledge and languages. Um, so with that, we're going to jump to a, a different mindset. Um, and pictured above um, is Maria. And she's from Puerto Rico. She just tw turned 25. And she's nonverbal and was born with motion constraints. Um, and also up there, pictured on, on the right there, um, is her mother. And I was interacting with Isis, her mother, on a Zoom call. Um, so you can imagine now, Maria spent 25 years of her life nonverbal um, with motion constraints. So she has to sign, but she can't sign the way that all of us can sign because her motion is constrained. She can't get to the high signs. So I worked on a device, and we custom trained it on her dialect, her way of signing. Right? Imagine for this second, you take away her disability from communication. That's what I was trying to do for her. And then this was edge artificial intelligence, so it gave her mobility. So she wasn't constrained by Wi-Fi connections anymore, right? And then on the output side, this is probably the most incredible part, but I got introduced to synthetic neural voice, which is where I can take your voice, for example, and I can create a, an AI version, and I can type in words, and then we can speak and sound just like you. But for Maria, I have this technology, but she's never had a voice. So the question became, if you've never had a voice, whose voice would you choose? An interesting question, right? So I asked her mother um, you know, if we could borrow her voice and give it to her daughter. So imagine for a second, there's this device. She signs in her way, 
and it speaks to you. If you were in the audience speaking to Maria, it would speak in the voice of a loved one, Maria's voice, right? And she can now tell her story to the world. Any of you would be able to understand her when she signs in her range of motion, and you can listen and hear what she has to say. And I remember early discussions about this. Our dream was to have, here, have her up here on stage at TEDx speaking to the world, telling her story. Right? That's the power of what's possible. Um, and then people ask me, it's like, where, where would this go into the future? And I'm meeting other people that are exploring and exploring the edges of this technology. And I went, met one particular father whose daughter had cerebral palsy. No motion, paralyzed, and no voice. Born without a voice. So what do you do in that case? And he said, the caretakers who have taken care of my daughter, they struggle, because so they can't communicate. But he's like, you know, but we have all these sensors that can measure bio data, bio information. And then if we could put a voice to all this, she could speak to her caretakers, right? Imagine how powerful that is for a second. So what's really, really interesting is, um, and that guy's my hero, um, and doing incredible things and extending the, the power of this technology. But this particular TED Talk, so this project for Maria has been going on for probably one and a half to two years. And because of this TED Talk, I reconnected with Isis, the mo mother of Maria. And two weeks ago, we created her synthetic neural voice. So this is the voice that we're going to give to Maria. And I asked Isis to write the story of what it's like. And we are going to put the synthetic neural voice on. And I have that video here today, so I'm going to watch on my screen. But you can hear, this is the first time you know, the public gets to hear the voice that we're going to give to Maria. So let's take a listen. Hola, soy la mamá de María. Ella tiene 24 años de edad. Nació con un desorden mitocondrial, hipotonía, miopía, estrabismo, parálisis de varios pares craneales, disfagia y desde los tres de edad tiene diabetes tipo 1. Desde los dos meses de nacida se le practicó una traqueotomía y se le colocó un getube para comer. Ha tenido muchos adelantos gracias a la fe el amor y la perseverancia de los que la rodean. María Angélica es una niña que, a pesar de que no habla, se comunica por medio de señas. Al tener problemas con su área de motor fino, tiene ciertas limitaciones al hacer las señas. Gracias a Charles, tenemos esperanza de que al poder darle voz a María y poder traducir sus señas, que hace con ciertas limitaciones. It's a beautiful voice, right? Um... So that also interesting about that, the technology wasn't really available for Puerto Rican Spanish. That's coming in the future. So we actually used that uh, Mexican Spanish for, so we layered a Mexican Spanish voice onto that. So I couldn't hear the difference, but some of you um, in the audience may be able to hear the difference. Um, so I'm going to now jump to the next story. But before I do that, I want to, there's a part of this, first story that I forgot, and I'm going to try an experiment. Um, I'm going to say something. So, me kai nai audience wan ni thi kao jai pom mai khap, kao jai kam thi pom phut mai khap. So, so that was Thai, and I was asking if anybody understood um, what I was speaking, right? And I, I wanted to do that because, you know, in a way, I'm invisible. I have a voice, but you couldn't understand what I said. And in a way, you were invisible to me because you weren't making contact and understanding what I was saying, right? So some of these stories, put that into your head, the perspective that I get to see by, by being bilingual, very, very interesting. Um, but some of you know, may know Chris Martin. Um, raise a show of hands. Okay, so, so I posted about Maria's story on Facebook, and Chris, um, or Mary, reached out to me and said, Charles, can you help my husband? And the long story short is Chris, um, and he'll explain this in a second, but the long story short is Chris had two bouts of throat cancer. He was a former radio DJ, got trained. His pipes were trained for this, right? And he lost his voice to throat cancer when they had surgery. But Chris told me one of the hardest things he's ever done was right before surgery, without telling anybody, he recorded a video of his voice. He recorded it so that his family could hear him, 
and that he could say goodbye to his voice because that was his livelihood, right? Because he recorded that video, I was able to extract the audio samples and recreate his voice and give him his original radio voice back, right? And so he has that voice now, um, and it's pretty incredible. And, and we're going to zip forward to the future. This is a story I, I haven't told very often because it's a newer story. But because of Chris, I met a lady in California, in San Diego. And she had two weeks. She emailed me. She's like, I've got two weeks. I'm going into uh, cancer surgery on my throat. My voice, the doctor said, could be lost forever. I said, can you preserve it? I've heard you've been working on this. So I worked and worked and worked, and we preserved her voice. And what she told me was the peace of mind. That was her greatest fear, was going into that surgery and coming out and not having a voice in our society, right? But we were able to preserve it. So put yourselves in that context for a second. You know, who, who knows what we'll have in the future? You know, ALS, stroke, cancer, whatever. If it affects our voice, we have the technology to preserve the voice now. Um, so we're going to watch a video, so I asked Chris, I've borrowed Chris's synthetic neural voice for other presentations, but what we're going to hear here in a second is Chris, um, he wrote the script for this, and he wanted to let the world know what it's like for him and Mary to have gone through this experience and go three years without a voice, and kind of as a surprise, he gets his voice back. So let's take a listen. This is Chris Martin. I can't be here today, so I have given Charles permission to use my voice in this TEDx talk to show you that I can express myself again in my own voice. Three days before major throat surgery to remove a stage four tumor that would necessitate removing my vocal cords, I decided to make a recording for those who might want to hear it again from time to time. For a trained radio broadcaster, our voices are our stock and trade. These are the first sentences of the video. Okay. So I am recording this video for a couple of reasons. One is so that you will always be able to hear my voice forever in perpetuity, I guess. Never, never in my wildest dreams did I believe that my own voice would live on beyond those specific words in that video. My wife continuously prayed that I would speak again, but we just could not imagine that this is how that prayer would be answered. And yet it has been because Mary asked and because Charles said he would try I now have the ability to speak again through this technology. I just wanted to know, like, the richness of that voice, right? He, he trained, he lived, that was his livelihood, and to have it taken away, right? And I'm so happy that we could give him back, you know, give that back to him with this technology. Um, and this is a, a new story. Um, it's not very long because it's brand new. But three years ago, um, I drove out to the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. I was born in uh, Rapid City. And um, I took my family, and we were delivering 3D printed PPE. And I wanted to note that you see the roadblock there on the edge of the reservation. They were hit so hard that for several weeks, they didn't let anybody in that lived, on, that lived outside the reservation, right? They were trying to protect. Um, but while I was on there, I met uh, Ken Lone Elk. He's pictured up there in the, the hat. Um, and I learned about the Lakota language. Lakota is interesting because there's only 2,000 speakers left of Lakota. It's also some of the words are sacred. So with the large language models now, you can preserve languages. And with synthetic neural voice, you can preserve pronunciations, enunciations, all kinds of context and culture in those languages. But if you were a Lakota speaker, which is hard for us, right? We have billions of English speakers, so put yourself in their head. You have a language, it's slowly diminishing, but you have rules around how and when certain words can be spoken. Would you want to preserve it, right? So an interesting question arises with the Lakota language, and I'm asking them now if they want to preserve it. But imagine how many languages around the world you know, this technology is available for. We can now preserve whole languages, how it sounds with this technology. Um, 
So those are the, the last of my stories. Um, and let's see, a lot of cognitive load today. <laughs> so I tried to have you go into my mind as a bilingual, bicultural person. Um, we had you think about what it's like to be Maria, who was born nonverbal with motion constraints, or her mother, who gives her voice to her daughter. Um, we had the gentleman, my hero once again, who is helping his daughter and all people that are born nonverbal and maybe have lost motion. We talked about Chris and Mary Martin, who many of you know, and how you go through life with a voice, but what it's like to lose a voice. And then with uh, the lady in California, you know, how many of us may go through this? You go into surgery thinking you may lose your voice. You can preserve it now. And then speaking of broader languages, right? We can start preserving languages now. Um, so the power, I hope I instilled into you the, the power of our own voice. I don't know how many of us take our voice for granted, but there's the power in our voice and the power of AI. And I want to end with this story. Um, I was with Chris and Mary Martin. We were at Demo Day in Grand Rapids last week, and they warned me. They're like, Charles, people are going to feel very awkward around Chris. They're going to look down. They're not going to look him in the eye. They're going to think he's rude because he doesn't answer them right away. Some will walk away. They don't have the patience for him to write or type the words. They'll walk away, right? That's what it's like to be Chris, to be partially invisible in our society. But something magical happened last week because I had a headset and we put it on those people and they heard Chris's voice and they were standing right there and Mary was the first to observe this. She said they would lift their eyes, there would be a smile and they would look at him in the eyes and there would be a smile and there was a human connection, right? That's the power of AI. It can connect people in a way we never thought possible before. So, it's super, super powerful stuff. Um, thank you for hearing my voice and the stories from my heart today. And that's it. <laughs>